The UK and the EU clash over sovereignty, the European Commission is in turmoil and Europeans attack the UK vaccine. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We're only going to do one show today but it's going to be quite comprehensive. It's all about this row between London and Brussels that started a couple of days ago, a few days ago, on the European Union's status uh, as a fake country because they want to be treated as a nation, like a proper country with embassies and diplomats. Uh, yeah, you, know, you remember when they said it used to be a trading block? No, no, no. The United States of Europe is here. <laughs> yeah, USC. <laughs> so that's what's happening. The UK have decided to say no, you can't. We can't just give you random embassies and random diplomats uh, just like you know any other normal country because you're not a normal country. Uh, and uh, the European Union have said, well, we cannot accept the UK's decision. <laughs> okay, go complain to the United Nations if you want to. In this video, we're going to talk about this row and how it's escalated and is now uh, going around talking about this uh, the, the vaccines, the AstraZeneca and Oxford and also Pfizer. The European Union aren't too happy with the way the UK-based vaccine uh, hasn't actually been delivered. We can explain what happened there. It's actually the EU's fault. And in, re in retaliation, the European Union have decided to almost ban but control exports from Europe to around the world. Uh, so this is actually getting fascinating and it's all the European Union's fault and we're going to talk about it towards the end of the video so make sure to watch the whole thing because uh, the mainstream media aren't really explaining this whole thing properly. But let's talk about this row. Basically the EU have uh, criticised the UK's decision because you know the UK cannot make its own decisions. You know not that the UK is independent or sovereign but they've said that you know we need to have EU ambassadors uh, in London to have full diplomatic status. <laughs> as if that's a priority right now. So this is what has been happening for the past week. And uh, they've said that, uh, so firstly, they're saying that the, you know, this, this move from the UK is not going to be um, good for the start of this new relationship and it's going to be damaging. And it, it's been kind of weird seeing how uh, they've actually reacted to this because uh, the EU foreign ministers met in Brussels on Monday, yesterday, and discussed this whole situation and saying that the UK's move is not a friendly one and there would be no good prospects if things continued this way. I'm not really sure why they're so concerned about this nonsensical issue. Uh, we know why because that's another step towards USC, USC, <laughs> United States of Europe uh, and even, even the you know, minions, the Federalists, Ramonas have come out to write articles saying that not granting the EU full diplomatic unity will hurt the British interests. Really? Really? Will it hurt British interests? I'm not really sure it works that way, considering the European Union are very desperate these days, financially, politically, and in terms of the credibility. They're hanging out with Cuba and China these days, so, you know, all the cool kids are ignoring the EU, now they're hanging out with the weirdos. For the record, talking about their governments, not the people. So in case anyone kicks off, talking about the Cuban government and the CCP, they're the weirdos, not the people of Cuba. Uh, the people of Cuba are fine. Now, this has escalated. And uh, that's why, when it comes to uh, what's been happening with AstraZeneca and uh, the Oxford jab, uh, so they're bringing some issues with deliveries to, into Europe. Okay, so let's unpack this properly. There is a reason that there was an issue with uh, deliveries. They've decided to come out, completely kick off, and say that, you know, well, we're going to have to fix the situation and we're going to have to basically say that in, in the future of all companies that's producing this, in the EU will have to provide an early notification whenever they want to export it to and outside of Europe, outside of the EU 27 countries. So if you are based in the European Union, coming out with some sort of new product, you know, for jab, and uh, you know, there is a global crisis, the whole world is going down, Africa, South America, Asia, the European Commission have now decided that unless you're part of the EU 27 countries, your life doesn't matter. We're going to stop it here. We're going to stop the exports unless they give us early notification, go through a bureaucratic process. Why? Because they're kicking off, they're crying because Ast AstraZeneca and the Oxford uh, vaccine wasn't delivered properly. They're blaming the UK and AstraZeneca. No, that's not true. Again, I'm going to explain this in a second, but the Germans have come out to publish a report attacking AstraZeneca 
uh, and the Oxford team saying that, well, we just discovered, you know, it's, 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 it's only 8% effective anyway, 8%. They've read something in a report and they said, well, it's, it's 8%. Well, that's not really true, is it? Because again, uh, AstraZeneca came out to say that, well, this is just nonsensical. It, it makes no sense. We'd never said 8% uh, is actually um, is effective or not. The, the percentage wasn't given in that sense. Even uh, the UK government came out to say that, okay, the Germans don't, clearly don't know how to read numbers because they mixed up the whole thing. The 8% it was the percentage of people over 65 in the, uh, in the actual report. So there was, there was a number, 8% in a report. The Germans have decided to misread it and say that, well, no, no, it's 8%, it's only 8% effective. No, the 8% was the number of percentage of the people who were over 65 in that study. That was it. This continued. The whole day yesterday was absolutely chaotic. So the UK government came out to say that we're not really worried about the EU threatening to ban the exports uh, because um, you know while Pfizer is based in Brussels, well, Belgium, uh, the, the main row is about AstraZeneca, which is actually are made in Oxfordshire and Staffordshire and filled into the vials in, in North Wales. So we're fine. You, you could ban the exports, but you know, it's not going to affect the UK. They didn't like it, the European Union, because now they've come out, <laughs> they've come out to actually say that, oh, you know, this UK vaccine stuff is absolutely rubbish. We don't even want it. We don't care for it, really. So anonymous sources in the EU have suddenly rubbished UK vaccine after the bloc spent an entire day in a hiss of it over getting fewer deliveries after the approval delay. This is according to Tom Harwood from Guido Forks. Fascinating, right? So they spent the whole day yesterday, the last couple of days, complaining about AstraZeneca and you know, the UK team saying, oh, you know, you're not giving it to us, it's been delayed. Now they've woken up saying, you know, it's a terrible vaccine anyway, we don't want it. <laughs> Again. Who's to be blamed? The European Union. Ursula von der Leyen, head of the Commission, had a meeting, urgent meeting, with her team last night to put together this video. And this is the end result. Europe invested billions to help develop the world's first COVID-19 vaccines. To create a truly global common good. And now the companies must deliver. They must honour their obligations. And this is why we will set up a vaccine export transparency mechanism. Europe is determined to contribute to this global common good. Okay, this is the best they can do apparently. And uh, the whole point of this is that the reality of the situation is that there was a delay and there's been some issues with bureaucracy up to a point where the even pro-EU sources have realized it's the EU's fault. They've come out to say that I understand Brexit better now. Now I'm gonna tell you the story. So, three months prior to anybody else in, in Europe, the UK decided to sign a contract with AstraZeneca. This is uh, back in around May. And uh, now in June, uh, some European countries, now France, Italy, the Netherlands, Germany, they decided to get together, sign a contract with AstraZeneca and uh, so everything was in place. Now, the European Union didn't like it. The European Union said, no, we have to do it on your behalf. So the UK did it back in May, and there were some you know, issues, bureaucratic issues that they had to go through, so they had a few months to do that. The next month, these European countries, some of them, uh, did the same thing. The EU Commission stopped it, and they said, no, no, we'll, we'll renegotiate the contract. Three months later, or two, three months later, in August, the EU finally managed to agree to the same exact same contract. There were not there weren't any changes made. It's just that the EU were controlling the agreements and uh, the supply of it basically in Europe. So that delayed the whole process. So the UK was already three months, you know, in advance preparing everything. The Europeans delayed because the EU, you know, decided to you know be the manager. And then things kicked off without actually testing the, the process and the deliveries, of course there are now issues that they're facing. This is what's happened. That's the reality of the situation. And, uh, but the <laughs> European Union decided to blame AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca had no idea what was happening because they said, well, we said yes to Germany, Netherlands, Spain and Italy. Everything was ready. 
we were going to test the delivery systems and everything else, the processes. The EU stopped it, and they just you know agreed to the same terms anyway. Of course, there's going to be some issues now. So, and now they've said we're going to try our best to sort it out. You know, work 24 hours, sort it out. But then the EU have now come out to say that oh, we don't even want it. It's a terrible jam. <laughs> So that's the reality of what happened. The mainstream media here aren't talking about it because they don't even know what's happening. Actually, Robert Purston, for once, was one of the first, the only journalist that gave us a good explanation of what happened on Twitter. Otherwise, no one else had a clue for like hours yesterday what's happening, what's been happening. So Sky News and BBC were clueless. Uh, they didn't know if they should blame the EU, the UK or AstraZeneca. Uh, in reality, it was the European Union's fault. Who would have thought that this... Uh, United States of Europe project doesn't actually work. Uh, so that's the latest update I have for you guys. As I said, we only have one show tonight, but I do want to ask, uh, well, I'll tell you that I am so grateful for all the support. Uh, the, we've received, we've had a lot of members joining over the last few days. And also we've had a number of um, uh, PayPal donations as well. Uh, actually, I wanted to give a quick shout out uh, as a while I try to find the PayPal donations that we have from you guys. Uh, if you want to obviously become a member, get a lot of perks and benefits, including weekly Q&As, weekly video calls with me and Lacey, and uh, the video podcast, check out the link in the description and become a member. I want to give a massive shout out, special shout out to Monima O'Connor, who donated £100 on PayPal. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, well, obviously to everybody else as well who've uh, been uh, contributing to our work. Uh, and uh, But the main point is, if you want to support the channel, obviously become a member, but the main thing is, get your I Believe in Britain merchandise. Uh, you have only a few days left until the end of January to use a special discount code, BREXIT10. No space, BREXIT10. Uh, I'll put it on the screen also, you can find the link in the description. Get your I Believe in Britain merchandise. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm MyTC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.